Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. The NFL Draft is about to kick off. I believe the top player in the draft, based on what I saw in the uh, BCS playoff last year, is Jameis Winston. Now, I'm a Pac-12 guy. I've watched Marcus Mariota for years. Mariota might have a higher ceiling than Jameis Winston. But understand, Winston is the better quarterback right now coming out of the more pro-ready offense. Right? Now, just understand, whether a team picks Jameis Winston or Marcus Mariota, right, that team's not going to win the Super Bowl next year. Quarterbacks have to go through a learning curve in the National Football League. Right, Both of these guys are really pocket passers. I was surprised at Marcus Mariota's time in the 40. Right, Obviously, he runs as fast as Russell Wilson. Right, I was surprised because watching Oregon football, Mariota really is best from the pocket. Neither of these guys is RG3 in terms of running around. Right? So I'm expecting these guys to face a learning curve. Running quarterbacks like RG3 can put up artificially inflated quarterback ratings, right, where they're only throwing the one-third of the field and running the rest of the time. Pocket passers who have to deal with the entire field are not going to put up crazy numbers, right? Neither of these guys is going to lead their team to the promised land. I know... Russell Wilson had a great first year. Understand, Russell Wilson's first year in the NFL, he was 24 years old. 24. Older than both of these guys. Also, it looks like Jameis Winston is growing up emotionally. I don't think he's prepared to put up the kind of rookie season that a guy like Andrew Luck, who stayed at Stanford for four years, was able to put up. Right? People are at different emotional ages when they're 20, 21, 22 years old. So let me say this. I'm expecting Jameis Winston to go first in the draft. He's the Florida State guy. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have the first pick. Lovey Smith is a guy who is seasoned. Right? He understands that Jameis Winston is a major talent. He's patient. He can put things like the crab leg hookup and the uh, crazy statements from, you know, the top of a table that Winston was involved in, right? He also can put in perspective and can read the reports rising out of the alleged sexual assault. I think Jameis Winston goes first in this draft. Then I think things get interesting. Right? I believe that Marcus Mariota belongs in a Philadelphia Eagle uniform. Right? Who's the best coach in recent Oregon Duck history? I would say it's Chip Kelly. Who's the best quarterback in recent Oregon Duck history? I would say it's Marcus Mariota. There are reports that when Chip Kelly was interviewing for head coaching jobs in the National Football League, he talked about how he felt Mariota was the kind of quarterback who could win multiple Super Bowls. Right Now, I know Tennessee, the team holding the second pick in the draft, is asking for a king's ransom to move out of the pick. Right, In my opinion, the Philadelphia Eagles should pay it. Right? Understand there's a huge drop-off in terms of mobility between Marcus Mariota and Sam Bradford, the guy currently slated to be the starting quarterback for the Eagles next year. Right? I would argue that Mark Sanchez, while very promising in that Philly system, right, doesn't have the upside of Marcus Mariota. I would also argue that we know the kind of dream quarterback that Ken Wisenhunt, the Tennessee Titan head coach, likes. That's the quarterback who took a Wisenhunt team to the Super Bowl, Kurt Warner. 
A guy who throws deep and who throws the ball all over the field. That's not Marcus Mariota. Mariota is really more of a timing quarterback rather than the Kirk Warner type gunslinger. Now it might surprise some folks, but Greg Cosell, a master at breaking down NFL films, believes that what Wisenhunt has right now at Tennessee, Zach Mettenberger, looks better on film than Jameis Winston. I'm not making this up, right? It's possible that Mettenberger fits Ken Wisenhunt's vision of what he wants from a quarterback more than a more mobile Marcus Mariota. So I'm expecting there to be trades. I understand Wisenhunt came out and said, hey, we like Mariota. Okay, fair enough. Understand these people are card players, right? If I want to get maximum value for that second pick, of course I'm going to say, hey, the guy I would pick second in this draft looks good to me, right? That's part of the strategy that goes with deal making. So, I believe Jameis Winston goes first in this draft, right? Then, I believe there's going to be a trade. I believe it's going to involve Chip Kelly, who, let's face it, is one of the premier dealers in the National Football League. How many guys would trade away LaShawn McCoy? Right? How many? How many guys would, at the last minute, swoop in? And pick up DeMarco Murray after picking up Sam Bradford, right, in a trade involving his starting quarterback, Nick Foles. That's already more trading action than most teams in the NFL this offseason. So I'm expecting there to be deals, I believe, Mariota's in play, right? There's some other teams rumored to also be interested. The San Diego Chargers, for example. With regard to them, let me just say, you've got to be kidding. You have one of the elite quarterbacks in the game right now in Phillip Rivers. He's in his early 30s. He still has gas left in the tank. You're going to get rid of him for any untested rookie? To me, that would be a bit much. I understand the Eagles making a move because Sam Bradford has been out with ACL problems for some time. We don't know what Sam Bradford has left in the tank. You know what Phillip Rivers has. And that's a lot. So put me among those who believes Mariota ends up wearing green next year. Maybe it happens before the pick. Maybe it happens after the pick. I don't know. But I'll be surprised if Chip Kelly passes on really a rare opportunity to pick up a quarterback that's tailor-made for his system because after all both of these guys were at Oregon after all Chip Kelly knows Mariota up close and recruited Mariota in the past right and let's be clear here there's a big drop-off in this draft in the quarterback position after Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota right I don't see the Mariota plan B. In other words, this isn't that draft where I'm looking around and I'm thinking, whoa, wait a moment. There's a Colin Kaepernick in this draft. There's a Russell Wilson in this draft. These guys might actually slip down to the later first round, the second round, the third round, right? I don't see that here. So, keep your eyes on Marcus Mariota. I think he's the key person in this draft. I think Jameis Winston goes first. He's off the board. After that, I think you're going to have some jockeying. You're going to have the head coach, Wilson Hunt, who knows that his team has many needs. Right? If he can get multiple draft picks where he can improve different areas of his team, that would be a good thing. You're going to have... A coach who is a trader, a gunslinger in the trading market, who knows that his dream quarterback is available in this draft, but that it's going to cost him to get him. 
Then you're going to have, of course, as you always do, teams you've never heard of who have been telling the press one thing, but who have a different agenda. That agenda might include trading up for Marcus Mariota. Let me say what else I think I know. George's Todd Gurley. I think he's going to go earlier than expected. Right? You see a franchise running back. Folks, I'm telling you, this is a league where you have a lot of teams in need of a franchise running back. Dallas, pick up. Right? My point is simply, when you have a franchise running back like this, I'm guessing a lot of teams have had a lot of doctors look at that knee. And they know, okay, he tore an ACL last year. But he's going to be ready sometime. Right? What would you pay to get, let's say, an Adrian Peterson type running back in your backfield under a rookie salary? So I think he goes higher. The other wrinkle in this draft is, let's face it, it's a wide receiver draft, isn't it? The wide receivers are coming out of the woodwork, aren't they? Amari Cooper, Kevin White, others, right? I'm guessing four wide receivers minimum go in this first round. We'll see what happens. Anyway, enjoy the draft. Leave your comments in the comment section to this video. I understand there are a lot of other talents out there on the board, Dante Fowler, Leonard Williams, many others, right? If you think there's a sleeper who is going to be picked much higher than expected, I hope you leave that sleeper's name in the comment section to this video. And if you feel there's a bust, if you feel there's a guy in this draft who's a complete fraud, who's going to sucker some team into taking that guy too early, and if you feel that guy is not going to deliver, is going to set that team back several years, I hope you leave that information in the comment section to this video as well. Thanks for stopping by.